Hey everybody, my name is Joseph Carmen, and today I'm going to be talking about lead poisoning in ancient cities. So the first question that I had when I saw this topic was, why was lead chosen over other types of metals? And actually, archaeologists' discoveries suggest that the use of lead precedes both copper and bronze, which would make it the first metal to be used by humans. However, even after the discovery of other metals, lead was still common in ancient civilizations. This is likely because it's relatively soft and malleable and resistant against corrosion, which makes it perfect for everyday use. Lead may only be available in small portions of the Earth's crust, but it is still not considered a rare element. It is easily mined and refined from the ores of galena, anglesite, sericite, and minum. Of these, galena is the most common because it has the lowest melting point. Another reason lead is commonly seen throughout ancient civilizations is due to the simplicity of the furnace itself. The image on the right is a visual example of what the common lead furnace would look like. As you can see, it's not much more than a circular wall, usually made of mud or clay, built into a hillside. Luckily, the process of extracting lead from its ore is just as simple. First, heaps of coal would be placed into the bottom of the furnace, and on top of that would be a layer of straw. The final layer was just as much galena as the furnace could hold. The bottom layer of charcoal would then be kindled, and the wind would do all the work of fanning the flame. The galena would then melt, and as it melted, it would be directed through a channel from the hillside onto a flat surface where it would form slabs. Looking back, scientists today are able to confirm that the mass creation and usage of lead throughout history caused both lead poisoning and environmental damage. The symptoms of lead poisoning became unignorable during the Industrial Revolution, where the production of lead peaked at an all-time high. Both the United States of America and many European countries began to pass legislation in order to protect industrial workers from toxic environments. Soon after, legislation to clean up the environment was passed as well. However, it wasn't until 1921 when the National Lead Company publicly admitted that lead was poison. Just after this, though, in 1922, there began legislation to ban lead from paints. This may be the first time in history that an effort has been made to reduce the harmful effects of lead. However, the symptoms have been heavily documented for nearly 5,000 years leading up to this period. One of the first documents describing the symptoms of lead poisoning dates back to an ancient Greek philosopher named Nicander of Colophon in 250 BC. He was able to correlate a high exposure to lead with both holocolic and anemia. Later, Hippocrates, a famous physician of ancient Greece, documented the same negative effects and included observations of people experiencing appetite loss, weight loss, irritability, and nervous spasms. He also noted that farm animals, such as cows and horses, could not be raised near mines or else they would quickly become ill and die. The ancient Romans were the most notable for their use of lead when compared to other ancient civilizations. Most luxurious things were strictly held for the upper class, however, to an extent, lead was a key element found in every person's life. Many of these products were even made available to the poorest proletariat. This is mostly due to the fact that lead was used for such a wide variety of things. Jack Lewis, a representative from the United States of America Environmental Protection Agency, extensively describes the usage of lead in Rome. He says that lead was a key component found in face powders, rogues, and mascaras, the pigment in many paints, a nifty spermicide for informal birth control, the ideal cold metal for use in the manufacture of chastity belts, a sweet and sour condiment popular for seasoning and adultering food, a wine preservative perfect for stopping fermentation or disguising inferior vintages, the malleable and inexpensive ingredient in pewter cups, plates, pitchers, pots and pans, and other household artifacts, the basis, basic component of lead coins, and a par partial ingredient in debased bronze or brass coins as well as counterfeit silver and gold coins. On top of this list of everyday items, the most notable thing that the Romans did with lead was creating a network of lead pipes for plumbing. The heavy usage of lead in ancient Rome was not due to the ignorance of lead poisoning. Romans may have regarded lead as the most precious of all metals, but they were also aware of the negative effects it had on their health. 
They even compared it to the Titan who devoured their young, Saturn. Although similar to many other ancient civilizations, the Romans were so fond of lead's diversity of use that they simply ignored the risks associated with it. Lead poisoning in ancient Rome was most easily seen through miners who spent a majority of their day working with the metal. These people, who were usually slaves, displayed symptoms such as lameness, pallor, and a wizened expression. However, the symptoms of lead poisoning were also apparent in the elite, who were privileged enough to be in constant contact with lead on their own terms. Elite ancient Romans used lead vessels to drink spring water that was brought directly into their homes through lead pipes. Even though every person was dealing with the negative effects of lead poisoning, it still was not enough to force the Romans to give up the simple lifestyle that it allowed them to have. Today, many scientists have begun to question if ancient Rome's collapse had any connection with their obsession with lead. The mysterious disappearance of such a historical empire has sparked so many questions over the years, but many archaeologists are trying to tie together the abundance of lead they find on these sites to the collapse of ancient Rome. This provoked researchers to compare lead isotopes found in ancient Roman piping in order to analyze the intensity of lead pollution they were dealing with. From this research, scientists concluded that tap water in ancient Rome likely contained 100 times the amount of lead pollution than local spring water. This number proves how reliant the society was on lead, but the team conducting this research said that it's unlikely that this number could have wiped out an entire population. Research may have been able to disprove lead intoxicated water as the reason for the extinction of the ancient Romans, but many historians have started to use this research to analyze other qualities of lead poisoning that could have led to their downfall. Now that it is known that lead is a highly neurotoxicant, it is being used to further analyze the strange actions of Roman leaders. It has been suggested that lead poisoning could have crippled their leaders' decision-making skills. And that lastly brings me to the page with all the citations of everything I just talked about.